the um uh, piece on key and Allen today and you're talking to your, your buddies in the coaching community and you've got to make the case for Key and Allen as the Heisman Trophy winner. What's, what's, what's the case you made? Well, I, you know, I don't know if I want to go there with that. I mean, but, you know, to talk about how great of a player he is, I think, you know, you're not going to find a, a, a guy in the country who is as natural and gifted and great instincts and competitive and big and great hands and understands the game and you know, but it all comes down to performance on the field for this year. You know, he had a great year last year, but now he's going into this year, and he has all the gifts to be as good a player as we've ever had here, in my mind. Is and the, we've had a lot of good players here. Is the program, uh, is, it, is it on the program's mind at all that he, he has an outside, outside chance at, at the trophy as, as you guys go into the season? It's, we haven't even started the season yet. You know, all that comes with with us winning football games and him playing a major role in it and things like that. So, you know, the, in my mind, those type of things happen week seven, week eight, week nine, toward the end of the year. At the beginning of the year, you know, it's, we're not even thinking about that. It's, you know, it's, if something like that were to come or his name get mentioned because our team's doing really well and he's had a major impact, which it makes sense if we're doing really well, he had a major impact. And at that point, then we can talk about it, but it's, it's too soon. Talk about that. How tough was it today, kind of being a little short on the D line? Today? Yeah. Today wasn't tough at all. Today was a day. Yesterday was in the afternoon, but today was just situational. A lot of walk through, a lot of mental stuff. Um, you know, so today wasn't wasn't a big deal. You know, tomorrow, we, tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow we play. Then it's then it's you know then we're gonna we're going into meet right now and see you know how many guys are going to take how many reps and so on and so forth. We have to be smart about the guys that are practicing uh, to not wear them out. Do you potentially see Todd Barr and, and Antoine Davis up there with the ones if, if need be? At, at no, I don't, think, I don't think we're to that point. Todd Barr is for sure. And Todd Barr may be a one. Todd Barr is playing well enough to be a one, but Antoine just moved there a couple of days ago. Is he actually there now? Or is that just because of your personnel? No, I, I, he'll stay there for this year mm -hmm. and then see, you know, we'll see from there. You know, he's, he's got the body for that type of thing. You know, he's a he's a long guy, tall, and he has some, a lot of growth potential, so that, that could be a spot for him. Is McCain out there today, too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Love he McCain. can play either spot? McCain plays outside right Yeah. But he doesn't he... play defense on that. Okay. We can never put him yeah. down on defense on that. He seemed to be out of defensive linemen today, almost. Uh, yeah, somewhere we rested. We rested him today so we can we can make sure we can go tomorrow. Davis would say it outside linebacker or, is, or, at, or end. Let's try to clarify what he end. said. End. Okay. Is he? For now. For now. For this season he will. How's Colton? Fine. He had a boot on today. Is that just no, practice? he's fine. He's, he practiced yesterday. It's just to let some of the inflammation settle down. You know, the, the boot is just to kind of take some pressure off a little bit. So when they're walking around, you know, it's part of the rehabilitation of something that's just sore. Necessarily doesn't have anything major wrong with him. He's able to scrimmage tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Looks this, like your tight ends are as as up and playing. Yeah, yep. They're back. They're back playing. I don't know if Richard will play tomorrow. Um, so we're in like a shoulder thing underneath. Yeah, just a little harness. But he's, deal. Yeah. But he's running around fine and caught balls today and things like that. So he'll, he'll be fine. It looked like he, his his range of motion was was Bam. pretty good. Right. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. His range of motion is good. You know, for him to land on it awkwardly right. or do something like that, there's really no need to do that for tomorrow. So, we're not, we won't play him tomorrow. And Jalil, where's he at? Yeah, that's a uh, Jalil is getting better every day. He's got a knee thing or something? Yeah, but nothing serious again. It's just, you know, he's getting two better. Two and a half weeks away from the game still, so. Oh, yeah, we got all of, all, everyone will be back for the game, you know, and hopefully in the next couple of days, really. Right. How excited is the team about uh, getting into a memorial for their first practice? Well, I haven't asked them, but I could tell you yesterday walking down after practice, we, we peeked inside the stadium and went to the edge and looked down there, and it was like, wow. And people are saying, I'm going to be the one to get the first touchdown in that stadium. And, you know, it was so I know when we walk into that stadium, you know, 
most likely it looks like Thursday morning, but I don't know for sure. But if it is, I know there's going to be there's going to be a lot of excitement to get in there. It looks it looks beautiful. Can't wait to get in there and get the footing and get the feel of it. Has that taken a lot of just off your plate in terms of not playing basically 12 road games during the season? Yeah, yeah. It's it's. Uh, you know, there was a lot of preparation that went into going over there. We had to go over there and practice and get used to where the wall was. And, you know, we go to a hotel every week anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And, and it was not that big of a deal. It really wasn't as far as um, it was just kind of the preparation, getting ready for it. It's just different than being at home. And it's, it's more the environment, uh, Memorial Stadium, that really provides a home field advantage that we really didn't, didn't have last year. Now that you guys have about a dozen practices on your belt, are, are you happy with where you are with, say, like installing the playbook, things like that? We are. Yeah, we're, we're pretty much there. We're pretty much there. And, uh, you know, so now it's just a matter of, of continuing to rep that stuff and do it different ways. And uh, so, but I'm, yeah, we're, we've installed a lot. So. Your O line, is it at this point maybe down to one spot still? When are you settling in on the other four, or how? No, it's, how it's still it's still all competitive. It's still really competitive, um, all around. How's their progress? It's it's good. It's tomorrow good. a big day to find out how they do. Yeah, tomorrow's any time you scrimmage, it's big for the offensive line. You know, you get to get after it, and, and sometimes they have to hold up a lot in practice, especially when you're in just shoulder pads and shells. You can't get on the ground and do things. So right. um, they really like when we're able to go full full go because they can get after people's legs and right. you know use all their tools. So. How's Schwenke done? I know you switched over in the spring. He's done well. Yeah. He's done well. Mentally, he's, he's doing a nice job and really doing a nice job. He's physical in there. He's a force inside. And you had Cochran running with the twos for a while today. How's he progressing? He's doing well. He's doing fine. You know, him and, and then uh, so Schwenke and Adcock, and I think Cochran has a chance to, to maybe, as we continue to go now, uh, I think physically he's done a good job. The center position is a lot mental, right? And uh, because he's directing traffic a lot of times, and so, uh, but I feel good about what he's done physically. Ed Cock was in there at right guard today. There's that a spot that you're still trying to see who's your best guy. Mm -hmm. He's our right guard right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How's the transition been today? from center? Ed Cock? Yeah. Fine. He's he's played both. Yeah. He did last year too, but yeah. is it all pretty smooth for him? Both. Yeah, I think so. You know, he does a nice job at center as well, but um, but yeah, he's kind of settled in a guard right now with Schwinky in there, but we could switch him over. You know, the key is kind of find the top eight that may travel that are, are pretty diverse in what they do. They can move from guard to center or, or guard to tackle or tackle to guard or whatever it may be, you know, because you're not going to travel with 10 guys at the line. So that's how you practice them to do that. You know, we'll, you'll see tackles playing guard. You'll see Kendall move to right guard here shortly. You'll see guys playing different positions. Barely has been playing a little bit of guard, too. He's been playing both, tackle and guard. And Williams is back to tackle a little bit today, too. Matt, Matt was playing both, guard and tackle. So, yeah, we're mixing all those guys up to see, you know, again, to train them for flexibility. Has Williams impressed? I know he was kind of behind. It seemed at least that he was behind the He's eight doing balls, much better. Right? He's doing much better. He understands what he's doing. He's... He's a good athlete, you know, but I think, you know, in the spring it was kind of paralysis by analysis. He couldn't really move because he was locked up with trying to think of what he was doing. But now, you know, even if you ask him, he would tell you, now I know what I'm doing. I, I can play much better and much faster. As a staff, after tomorrow, after you scrimmage, do you sort of feel like you can start to really get a better evaluation of groups and players yeah. and yeah. sort of set a depth chart a little bit? Yeah. At least? Mm -hmm. yeah, we have a decent idea now, but we got to get in and do that. It's one more evaluation opportunity. And then after that, yeah, we've got to start start paring it down a little bit. Maurice gonna go tomorrow, or just better not? To... Uh, I'm not sure. He's one of the guys we'll have to talk about. See how he's feeling. Sometimes, you know, maybe not right now, but tomorrow morning would be fine. So, right. What was wrong with him? He's just got a sore knee. <laughs> Nothing major. So with him out, Booza got a chance to take some reps with the one, and he seems like he catches every pass and every practice. Well, Booza has been. Um, you know, but uh, it's we're going to get a really good look at the young guys tomorrow. You know, uh, really, you know, ramp up the reps for the young receivers. And which ones in particular? All of them. There's five of them. All of them. Are you leaning towards playing three? 
We'll see. So we'll see. Are you seeing things you like out of all of them? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, all of them. Yeah. Are you hoping to make this difficult for you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that would, that's always a nice position to be in. Right. You know, but it's not just the physical part too. As who's ready, you know, to to really comprehend what we're trying to do, and you know, there's a lot going on. So, um, but yeah, we should know. And we'll know in the next couple of days, really, you know, the direction we're going to go there, because we have to start paring it down. We cannot continue to rep 14 receivers. You know, just can't do it. I think shaping up at linebacker at all, especially inside. Um, there's there's Forbes and Mullins and what, um, Wilkerson JP, in the mix. Morrell, Morrell. All those guys are taking reps. And again, you know, all those guys for game time, like tomorrow, like a scrimmage, you know, that's really a good evaluation tool for them at that point. So we'll see. Uh, what about Vincent Diamato? Have you been happy with the way he's handled himself in camp? So far, he's done some really nice things. But again, tomorrow we'll crank up the pressure a little bit, put him in some situations where you know, as we always do with noise or with, you know, the team running, depending on if he makes a kick or not make a kick and, you know, try to ramp up the pressure a little bit, move him around the field, things like that. How do you accomplish that with punters? I mean, obviously with a kicker, you can kind of blare the noise at them as they're getting set, but punters are a little bit different. Just do teamwork. You know, you got to be careful with the punter because if you come after him too hard and somebody runs into him or something, uh, you know, so we're, we're getting after him. You know, we're, we're bringing a full speed rush at him, but we're just very careful we're not going to run into the punter. How's Stephen Moss done? Great, great. Feel really good about that. Feel really good that we have two punters there. He's, he, uh, Moss has really come along through the last, uh, the first week, first couple of days, he was a little rusty, but he's, he's hit some nice punts. So, I mean, is it still competitive or is Leininger pretty much the, the, the favorite? No, Cole's the favorite. Cole is the Cole is our punter, right? But you have, you know, it's nice to know that you have a backup. You know that you're not putting with Richard Rogers back there as your backup punter. <laughs> Although like he we, might be like little, we did in the spring. He might be a little less fragile than that little Cole, though. <laughs> yeah, well, Cole's actually put together pretty well. He's, but we hope we don't ever have to test that. <laughs> At safety opposite Hill, has uh, Logan, Logan got a pretty strong hold on the starting position? Well, I don't, I don't know about a strong hold. I mean, he's he's there right now, but again, there's a long way to go. If you not know. him, who would it be? Could be Tyree. Um, could be Coley or Lowe now <laughs> is his name. Um, How's Avery doing? Avery. Avery's another one. And then all those guys are kind of in the mix with, uh, I want to see how Demare plays You know, tomorrow. It'd be nice to get him evaluated. And then all those guys have a possibility to play nickel as well. So you have to figure out that combination. Mario, a little bit of a surprise as a true freshman being able to perhaps make an impact this year? I don't know yet, that yet. I don't know that yet. I think physically he can run and he'll hit you and he's tough, but you know the, the game's moving a little faster than these freshmen are used to. So we have to see how he adapts to a get out there live situation, nobody on the field with you, go and cut it loose. And then we'll see, you know, adjust the different formations and motions and shifts and you know, all the things that safeties have to do you know so we'll get that evaluated. How's Whiteside being brought along after being away from the team for a while? Uh, slowly. Still with the third team? Mm -hmm. Do you see that changing based on this playing camp? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll take that day by day. So many guys missing. Is the offense maybe a little ahead of the defense? Um, I wouldn't say that. Um, I think the offense is ahead of where the offense normally is at this time. I'm not sure that that means ahead of the defense, because usually the defense is ahead of the offense. But So I'm not sure necessarily that uh, they're ahead of the defense, but I think the offense is ahead of where they typically are at this time of the game. Does that surprise you, especially with the freshman lineups? No, because we're, we have a group of guys in other positions that have been here, the quarterback especially. The two quarterbacks. You know, you have both those guys who are doing a really nice job. And Hinder has really done a great job in camp. I'm really, really hap happy how Hinder has come along. Uh, he's a much different player now as well. When you get into a road situation, how many quarterbacks will you take? Uh, probably three, maybe four. 
two, three, maybe four, depending on what we need as far as how the special teams shake down, how many specialists you need on special teams. Do we need two snappers? Do we need a short snapper, a long snapper? Do we need two kickers or three kickers? Or, you know, it's, it, it's all going to come down to numbers at that point. Would you say that Hinder has the lead for the third slot right now, or are you still evaluating that? We're still evaluating him. Yeah, but I'm really pleased with his progress. The third like quarterback guy. doesn't really matter unless something happens to one of the first two. That's the rotation, though, right? Other than reps in practice per game situation. Say that again. The third, third quarterback, quarterback, or the fourth quarterback, is kind of a moot point game day unless something catastrophic happens to one of the guys ahead of him. Correct. Yeah, but they don't get many reps anyway. Right. You know, the second guy hardly gets as many reps as he needs, let alone the third guy. You know, so the third guy, um, you know, you're definitely not going to rep four. No way. You know, but it's nice to keep people involved in the game and game planning and, you know, all the preparation that goes into it, both at home and on the road and, and that type of thing.